And now your host, Richard Thomas. Hello, and welcome to an hour of death-defying stories as It's a Miracle takes a look at some miraculous narrow escapes. First, a brother and sister wander into what can only be described as a real-life horror film, complete with a cast of thousands of ruthless and cold-blooded villains, each of them intent on destroying these young and innocent lives. It was August 25th, 2000, and Alan Bell and his family had just arrived for a weekend of camping at Taquamanan Falls in northern Michigan. We went up to view the falls and the river there just for the peace and quiet to get away from the, the rat race. Hey, Dad. There we go, yes. Do you think we're going to go bike riding? 11-year-old Andrew was anxious to explore the area, and his 7-year-old sister, Lauren, wanted to tag along. Because it had been a long car ride, we decided to let the children go ride around and blow off some energy. We told them to come back in about an hour. While Alan and his wife, Anne, set up camp, the children headed for the playground. When we got to the playground, we dropped our bikes off, and we just started swinging, and there were slides. We were having a pretty good time. And then eventually, my sister said, this is getting boring. What do you want to do next? I don't know. Hey, look, there's a trail. Let's go. I said, why don't we go on that little trail over there? She says, sure, why not? The two young siblings headed off into the woods, following the path that ran close to the river. Deer back here. I don't know, you might. As we were walking, I noticed caution tape hanging from trees and tied on trees. What does caution mean? Caution means be aware, be alert. There might be something dangerous up ahead. So I told my sister that we should turn around and just head back to camp. And just go a bit farther, please. We, we can't. We come have on, to go. please. Andrew, come on. We please. have to go. I turned around to start walking back, and my sister kept on walking. All of a sudden, she just fell. Andrew! And then I noticed the sound of the bees. Lauren had stepped directly into a hive of angry yellow jackets. Andrew, help me! She just started screaming. Andrew! Lauren! 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 Oh, my God! I've never heard my sister scream like that before. She was just in terror and pain. Mm -hmm. My first thought was dirt, and I started throwing dirt on her. But that just made the bees more angry, and they started coming at me. Now both children were under attack, and the swarm was growing larger. I remembered that my science teacher told us bees can't fly if they get their wings wet. And so he headed for the river. into the water. And it worked. The bees washed away and Andrew turned his attention back to his sister. Lauren, come on! They can't get you here! Come on! Lauren, come on! I was screaming to her, get in the water. The bees can't hurt you if you're in the water. Come on! She just stood there in terror. Just, she was like paralyzed. She couldn't move. Once again, Andrew was forced to enter the swarm. I picked her up and dragged her into the water. I told my sister, on the count of three, we're going underwater. One, two, three. Andrew held his sister underwater for several seconds until all the bees were gone. for help, yelling and screaming. And by the time we got out of the water, there was help that already arrived there. 
She got stung by bees okay. really bad. Really I knew that my sister was stung a lot more than I was. And I knew that if you got stung, a lot of times, a lot of bad stuff could happen. Okay, come on. Look at my parents, campsite 35. Campsite 35? I'll get them. Campsite 35. I looked down at my sister, and she was crying harder than she's ever cried before. She had red dots all over where the bees was stinging her, and her lips were swelling up, turning purple. I didn't know what her condition was. I didn't know if she was going to be all right. Is this Camp 35? The kids had been gone approximately a half an hour when a man walked up to our campsite and said that the children had been stung by bees. At that point, I thought that maybe they had one sting or two stings. You don't understand, they got stung a lot. We have to go. Come on, we have to go. Once I heard that it was multiple bee stings, I was panicked. As a registered nurse, Anne knew that the situation could be life-threatening. I was imagining the worst. When someone is stung multiple times, they can go into anaphylactic shock. Um, meaning that their airway will close and eventually they will not be able to breathe. But nothing could prepare her for what she found. I knew that we were in a critical situation. Her lips were very, very swollen and she was covered with bee stings. I'm gonna go back to the car and get the Benadryl. I'll be right back. I have a cell phone in the car. Okay. Try and use it, we'll call 911. Okay. I'd never seen anything like that before, and being that she was mine, it made it worse. While Anne ran for the car, Alan did his best to keep his daughter calm. She was crying and shaking all over. She had bee stings from head to toe. You never want to see your, your little ones hurt. And uh, if I could have, I would have taken all the pain that she was feeling. Before long, Anne returned with the car and the antihistamine. I told the kids to take the Benadryl, and I gave the phone to Alan to call 911. Regardless of how much Benadryl I had given her, she still needed to get medical care immediately. We gotta get her to the hospital here. I can't, I can't get a signal. Okay. We couldn't get a signal on the cell phone, and we had no idea where the nearest payphone was or where the nearest hospital was. Hurry up, get in, just get in. We went to the ranger station to call 911, but they were closed for the evening. So we drove outside the campground and found a variety store. Get a blanket, I'll call 911. I have an emergency. I need you to call 911. Come on, come on, Andrew, hurry up. Here, my daughter's been stung by a lot of bees. Help yes. was on the way, but the campground was half an hour from the nearest medical facility. I was so scared. I knew that Lauren's condition could get worse at any minute, and I was afraid that we could not get her the help that she needed. Hurry, thank you. I need some ice. By icing Lauren down, I was hoping that it would give us some extra time to help prevent the spread of the venom until the paramedics showed up. It's okay, honey. Lauren's situation was critical. It was very difficult for me to keep a handle on my emotions. I know. I had to be a nurse, and I had to be strong, and I couldn't let her know how afraid I really was. I didn't know whether or not she would live through this. I can't imagine my life without her. She brings so much joy to my heart. And I don't know if I could endure living without her. I was praying that my daughter would be okay and that help would get there quickly. Anne's prayers were finally answered when the paramedics arrived with epinephrine, a drug that would immediately reverse Lauren's intense reaction to the bee stings. With the young girl out of immediate danger, she was taken to the hospital for further treatment. A short while later, Dr. Robert Lazar, an allergist, made a startling discovery. 
Warren had 50 to 100 uh, stings with some yellow jackets, and 50 to 100 bee stings is quite a number. On top of that, we discovered that she had uh, allergy to several bees, including yellow jacket, yellow hornet, and white hornet. Of those shots, what do you think? I believe that if Andrew wasn't there, she probably wouldn't be alive today. It was Andrew's quick thinking and a lesson that bees can't fly if their wings are wet that saved not only Lauren that day, but Andrew as well. I was glad that I actually paid attention that day at school. I'm very, very happy that she's okay now. Every time I look at Andrew, and think about what he did and how he saved his sister's life. I just burst with joy and happiness. We are just so lucky to have her alive today. We treasure every day with her. I think it's a miracle that Lauren came through this. So that the bees would know that the queen was there. And just a year later, another unexpected miracle. Lauren has overcome her fear of bees. I did it. Lauren Bell is a very lucky little girl, lucky to have survived as long as she did being allergic to bee venom, and lucky to have an older brother like Andrew. We wanted to hear what's been happening with the Bell children, and so they join us now from their home in Traverse City, Michigan. Hello there. Hi. Hey, Richard. How are you feeling, Lauren? Pretty good. Looks like you got rid of all those nasty bee stings. Yes, I did. Well, you must be thankful for that, and especially thankful for what your older brother did when those bees attacked. I think it's very nice that he did that for me. Is there something special you'd like to say to him? I'd like to say that thank you for saving my life, Andrew. What do you think about that, Andrew? <laughs> it's pretty nice. Yes, it is. Has your relationship changed at all since all this happened to you? It hasn't changed one bit. We still fight like every other brother and sister. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. You have any advice for other kids who might find themselves in a situation like you and Lauren did? My advice would be just be alert. Just know where you are. Make sure you have a way of getting help and just look out for yourself. And look out for others too, right? That's also important to make sure that everybody around you, even if they're, especially when they're younger, to make sure that they're gonna be all right too. So Lauren, it sounds like as long as you stick close to your brother, you're gonna be okay. I'm gonna be really okay. I'm sure you will. And thanks for sharing your story with us. Thanks. thanks. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.